good morning class welcome back to geography class and today we are going to see the last session of the chapter migration and so let's start here with the impact of migration already you have studied about the migration and different types of migration but now we are going to see about the impact of migration and we are going to see that how this migration impacts the destination country means when the people migrate to some other countries how it impact that particular country and secondly we are going to see when the people they migrate to some other countries how it impact to the home country the place from where they have migrated so we are going to see here we are going to study about some of the advantages and disadvantages of migration in destination country and then we are going to see about the some of the advantages and disadvantages of migration to the home country so let's start here first of all the advantages and disadvantages of migration in destination countries and first we are going to see about the advantages already we have seen when the large number of people they migrate from some country to some destination country which they choose and we are going to see what that particular destination country will have the impact of that migration suppose some people migrate from india to united states of america and how these indians they will impact the country united states of america so first we are going to see the advantages and the first advantage is in united states of america usually there are so many companies and usually the local labor means the wage the salary usually is very high because of the government the rules and regulation they have to pay their employees and so when the people from asia like from our country india or maybe pakistan or some other asian countries when they go to usa what happen now usually these big multinational companies they hire them at very very cheap or you can say at very low rate so like this actually all these companies they get cheap labor so they pay less and they have to pay less wage low wage but these people from asia or maybe africa even so they work very hard and they are much honest and even they can work for longer period of time why because these people from asia when they get the salary there in us dollar and that salary according to the in comparison to indian rupee or the asian currency in the different countries it is much higher means whatever work they do in united states of america and same work if they do in india or in asian country and whatever wage or salary they will get here so even though the salary which they get that is less in comparison to the other people means the local people what they get the salary that is less than that but in comparison to the salary which they can get in india or in the asian countries it will be much higher and this is why these people they work very happily so first thing these countries means the destination countries they get cheap labor second thing 
Now here you see the people when they go from India or maybe from other Asian countries or Africa to United States of America or some other developed countries. Now usually because they are very focused why they have gone to these developed countries so that they can earn money and they can save it and that's why they work hard they develop their skill the most the most of the focus actually is to develop their skill to make it to take it to the higher level and that's why these people maybe from india or maybe from other countries they are very very skilled and talented because they are very very focused they don't waste their money they don't waste their time they are very focused to their work or the assignment what they have been given why because for that only they have gone there the third thing the third advantage is the cultural diversity now what happen the immigrants actually like suppose indians when indians now slowly and slowly if you will find about the data of the indians how they have gone to united states of america and now there are there are large number of indians they have got the green card there and they have settled in united states of america i am just taking the example of united states of america we can take the other countries also now there are large number of people not they are uh, the local they have just settled there not only in usa but in even some other developed countries also if you take the example of uk or maybe italy or maybe france spain even in those countries also large number of people they have settled there and now they have also got the the citizenship of that particular countries well but the thing is suppose now you are taking the example of indians now usually when the indians they settled even in united states of america they don't leave their culture means what is the culture the food what they eat the dress what they wear means the indian dress usually they use the indian dress indian tradition indian festivals as they celebrate together and so what happen when the local people in these countries when they see all these things and what happen they get so much interested means uh, they just uh, they are very very uh, so they get very impressed by the indian culture and what happen like this this also provides a cultural diversity because of this actually now in the foreign countries like usa and even in some european countries even the people the local people even they have started wearing the sarees i'm just giving one example how they are and they are also start eating the indian dishes different type of dishes not only indian now slowly and slowly thai dishes chinese dishes they are getting more popular there in these countries like united states of america and other european countries so this is example of cultural diversity as these people when they migrate to these countries they also brings there the cultural diversity now let's see about the disadvantages now the first disadvantage is the job loss now what happen when because the migrants actually if we call them immigrants the people from the other countries now usually because they can they are ready to work at very very low wage and that's why most of the companies and the multinational companies actually they hire them and that actually creates a, a job loss for whom for the local people because now the local people they have more pressure now they have more pressure to increase their skill level now they need to be more focused they have to become more focused hard working honest all these skills they have to develop why because these immigrants they are providing these all things so this is why the another the disadvantage the first disadvantage here the in these countries the destination country can, can be seen is the job loss 
next is the discrimination and racism now because of this actually what happened the local people now what happened a jealousy starts creating means they just uh, uh, jealousy or you can say uh, ill will Ill, Ill feeling actually it starts developing in these local people's heart and that leads to the what thing discrimination and racism that's why you can find uh, the in uh, European countries like uh, in uh, UK or USA the lo local people some of the local people some of the resident of these countries they hate Indians why because they are very very hard working now they don't spend so much time in just uh, spending their money or maybe in the some different type of things and that's why this type of discrimination and racism it starts developing among the local people another is the social pressure now because what happened now usually the government have a very very limited facilities a government can provide a limited facilities to the to their uh, to their citizens and as the large number of people when they starts migrating from the different countries to some destination country what happen it also starts creating a social pressure the certain type of amenities amenities like housing health education now they get a increased pressure so this is the third disadvantage social pressure starts developing in these destination countries the fourth one breakdown of culture and tradition now breakdown of culture now what happened here the different people actually they are exposed to the different ways of doing things why how let's see here now suppose now suppose in some remote area suppose in remote area of usa now very few people usually live now they don't know many things like many types of the crime they don't know but what happened when the immigrants when they come there and what happened from them actually they can learn new types of crime new types of things and which can also actually is the negatively it break down the culture and tradition so the same way this is a disadvantage wrong things when the local people when they learn actually the wrong things from these uh, immigrants so that can actually develops the negative breakdown of culture and traditions another thing is disease a very recent example we can see now what happened in wuhan in china what happened when the corona virus it spreads there and what happened large number of people from the other countries what happened they just fled to so many countries carrying the disease and this is how actually this disease from wuhan china spreads there all over the world and you can find the result what happened same way actually time to time we have seen in the history also same type of things happened but not at such large scale like uh, as we are facing now at present as we can facing this corona virus not this type of thing but this type of epidemic actually they have already been seen in past there is example of spanish flu now it happened there in spain but what happened from the spain actually when the people they migrate to some other countries what happened they have taken to those places one example actually it, that the same way they it, uh, the spanish flu it came to india and it spreads there in uh, gujarat and in some parts of india even well the government control it well the same way now at present you can find corona virus also we have seen so this is the disadvantage so we have seen here the different advantages and disadvantages now let's move to the some of the advantages and disadvantages of migration to the home country home country means when the large number of people they migrate from suppose we take an example of india now when people from india they migrate to usa or other european countries so what advantages and disadvantages actually india we going to face so let's see so we going to see the example of india we'll take here the first thing 
we are going to see about the advantages so when actually what happen any person from uh, some family suppose they migrate to some very developed countries like in united states of america or uk or maybe france and they get a very good job and very good salary so what happened the first advantage is remittances remittances means what happened they just uh, send back a large sum of money to their families so like this they support the family they support their family members so like this actually one more thing india also get the the foreign exchange because from britain suppose if any indian is working there so what he will send he will send the pound and what will happen so this pound will be changed into indian currency rupee and then it will be given to the to his family but the thing is like this india also gets the foreign exchange so remittances this is the first advantage the second advantage is the better job opportunities for locals now because as all of you know the population in india is increasing so when the large number of people they get the good job in some other countries in some developed countries so what happen there are more chances for the other people for the jobs so the other people they can get that the better jobs for which actually more the best people they already have they have actually left that position or designation or some post because why because they have migrated or they have gone to some other countries next is the knowledge and skill flow now in this actually what happen when uh, we will take the example of some uh, seasonal migration now suppose some people actually from india suppose they go to some countries like united states of america and they suppose uh, we just take an example of uh, the scientist now suppose some space scientist now he get opportunity to work in nasa now in nasa actually what will happen for suppose he is deputed there and he work there for 5 years but for 5 years actually he get the more exposure more experience and he will learn he will develop new skill new technologies so when he will return back to india what will happen he will spread the same thing he will able to teach those things those skill those technologies and everything actually he can bring it back to india and he can share it back to in india so this is how actually the knowledge and skill flow this is how this knowledge of the different technology and uh, different skill actually it flows from the other foreign countries to the home country example we have seen here we are taking the example of india now these are the advantages now let's see here about the disadvantages so the first disadvantage is loss of skill labor now what happen usually we can take the example of iitians and iims now there is a great demand of the students who actually pass out from iits in india and indian management uh, indian institutes of management iims because these institutes they just uh, provide very very good students highly skilled the labor uh, workforce so that's why they have a great demand in the foreign countries and what happen these genius doctors and nurses and engineers they migrate to some other countries now these people actually they can contribute so much in our country but instead of that actually they have chosen to migrate and now as they are working in the united states of america maybe in suppose some companies like apple or maybe microsoft or google or maybe nasa so what happen they contribute in these specific organizations now instead of suppose if they work in india like in infosys or maybe in isro or maybe in some other companies organization so rather than contributing here in india now whatever the skill and as these are the genius people now they are contributing in the, in the growth of the other countries so this is a loss of skilled labor 
second thing is the fall in demand for the home goods now right actually what happened is suppose when very very large number of people they migrate to some countries what happened now there is a decrease in population and what happened there is a fall in the demand for the home goods can be seen now this thing can be taken we can take example of syria now usually syria they were having a very very big population but what happened this last part of syria actually it came under the terrorist group isis isis and as they started persecuting the local people large number of people actually in many lakhs of people they migrated to other countries other european countries and what happened the population in syria many of the villages actually they have become vacant the cities what happened now the population has just decreased and it has it it is so less now so because of this actually now it is affecting what thing the economy of the country syria next is the social impact now what happened when the parents suppose from india suppose uh, in from family a uh, father leaves the family back in india now his children and wife is staying back in india and he just uh, gone to united states of america suppose he has gone there for 5 years now what happened his family members his children and his family back at home in india they suffer what they suffer a loss now loss of whom loss of elderly person in the house who can guide these children who can actually contribute in uh, the family nested now he is there in the some other countries so this is a uh, called social impact now here migration it can be permanent also and it can be temporary temporary means suppose some people have gone to some other countries for some period uh, some very uh, short period of time suppose 3 years 4 years now that is called temporary mig migration but what happen in most cases when people they migrate to some other countries because they see the lifestyle there and they just tries to get the citizenship there and they settle there so that is called permanent migration so migration is of two types permanent migration it can also be a temporary migration now next is we are going to see about the some example so now let's see here about some example of the migration now we, when we will see the example of united states so united states actually is a country of immigrants why because the whole america continent both the north america and south america both the continent was discovered by christopher columbus and what happened after the discovery of these new continents large number of people from europe they started migrating to this continent now what happened in united states of america in the 19th up to till the 19th and 20th century large number of people from europe they were migrating to these countries in united states of america also and what happened so all the people here these people in america now they are all immigrants why because they are all actually migrated from europe that's why united states of america is known as the country of immigrants now what happened after that actually when the population it starts increasing in united states of america now then the government actually decided to restrict the free immigration and after that what happened some rules and regulation were made actually by the us government and according to that actually for these immigrants actually they need to stay there for 7 years and some of the things they have to fulfill and then they can get the green card well after so many things happened internationally especially the terrorist activities now the present united states of um, uh, us government present us government actually they have totally stopped the 
immigration. Now these immigrants actually they are not allowed actually actually to get the citizenship of US. Even if you see the recent news actually, now the recently actually the president of America is Donald Trump, and now actually he has made even the free immigration from the Mexico and the Latin America because from Mexico and from Latin America large number of people usually illegally they enters in United States of America now just to stop this crime and the terrorism activities actually now the US government have stopped all type of migration now let's see another example of uh, Australia but before we see the another example I want to show you this figure this figure 3.7 if you will see here this uh, chart this diagram it shows about the Indian immigrants population in the United States of America from 1980 to 2013 so let's see here in 2000 sorry 1980 how many people they migrated to US 2 lakh 6 thousand after 10 years 1990 now this population Indian population became 4 lakh 50 thousand in 2000 means after again 10 years now it became how much 10 lakh 23 thousand then after 6 year 2006 what happened now 15 lakh 19,000 now just after 4 year in 2010 what happened here 17 lakh 80,000 and 2013 it reaches to how much 20 lakh 35,000 so if you see here this increase actually in 1980 when these immigrants from India just only one country India it was how much 2 lakh 6 thousand only and from 2 lakh 6 thousand in 2013 how many years it is just 33 years in 33 years the Indian population increases to from uh, 2 lakh 6 thousand it increases to 20 lakh 35 thousand so this is the one example I am showing you that how only one means the immigrants from one particular country that is India they have increased so much in 33 years. Why? Why actually large number of people from India and not only India from other countries also they want to stay or they want to live in United States of America. The reason is because of the quality of life better lifestyle the better living the better job opportunity now let's see another example of australia here now australia is a big continent and it is actually a under populated country and this is why till 1970 australia was providing actually a shelter means they were provide providing even the home even for the people from Southeast Asia, the country like uh, Vietnam, Thailand, Myanmar, even India and Bangladesh. So these people were, were provided the home also, the shelter there. But what happened? After that, as the population increased and especially because of the terrorism activities, now even the Australia also have restricted this uh, migration now. Another example, if you see some example of United States, sorry, Soviet Union and some other country, some other communist countries like China and also North Korea. Now these countries, they don't allow the immig immigrate. They actually, they don't actually, they are not allow the immigration. Now why it is? Due to the political reasons. Now these countries, they don't want actually that uh, people from their country they should go and settle other in other parts of the world or the people from other countries they may come to their countries right another example 
the universal the migration we have seen in 1947 some example we are going to see in 1947 what happened when the pakistan and india they were separated what happened large number of muslim from india what happened they migrated to pakistan at the same same way large number of hindus they migrated to india now this is known also this is also known as the forced migration now usually they don't want actually to migrate but they have to migrate and this is example of forced migration now some more example in india you can find because after the marriage suppose any girl is married to some other cities or some other state now that girl she has to go to her uh, husband's house right and that these are the factors varieties of factors like marriage now employment means some people actually suppose from gorakhpur they get good job in tamil nadu so what happened they started working there and they settled there education for better education also many students they migrate to some other part of the our country itself lack of security now in villages suppose or suppose some ex example you can take tank example of uh, bihar now they are actually in some area because of the naxalite naxal activities the because of these naxalites what happened the people are not secure and so they have migrated large number of people that's why from bihar they migrated to eastern part of up that is gorakhpur you can find and um, varanasi also these are the example of <coughs> lack of security so so we have seen here so many things about the migration now let's see another topic that is the brain drain now what is called brain drain now brain drain usually refers to a departure of educated or professional people from country right economic sector or field for another usually for the better pay or living conditions example now already suppose example i am giving i am giving you now what happens from india now because of the better opportunity a very very good salary very very good package actually many of the uh, means the new students new young people from india now they want to work in other countries developed countries like united states of america mostly actually they want then uk or france or italy or spain why already i told you because of the better quality of life better life style and as many of the young people they have a dream they have a one um, dream actually has built in their mind that if they can go there it is it's also a prestige issue also right if their families even their parents actually they have so many so much prestige issues well well because of these things actually what happen large number of uh, people especially the genius people the genius minded genius minds we can say now what happen when they get the better opportunity in this country so usually they leave their job here back in india their organization everything and they migrate to the countries like the american countries or european countries now this is called brain drain now this brain drain actually has many causes so we are going to see about how why this brain drain occurs so first of all we are going to see about the the causes of brain drain so usually the brain drain has got how many causes there are the two causes the first cause is the push factor and second cause is the pull factor so let's see about the push factor what is the push factor push factor means because these people suppose we are i'm taking the example of india now suppose from our country india now because of some factor actually these people actually they are pushed means they are forced they are forced to migrate to some countries to other countries destination countries that is called push factor now pull factor means when these young people they get attracted for some reason in other countries and they migrate because of that so we are going to see a the push factor so push factor force the individuals they move voluntarily and many cases they are forced because of some risk actually 
like example because of some conflict back at home or maybe because of the famine in the re region or drought so what happens these people when they migrate that is called push factor so let's see here some of the push factors the number one is the absence of research facilities now the students actually in india they don't when they don't get the proper research facilities now they are genius people now they whatever thing actually what the the facility what they want actually when they don't get here back in india what happened they choose to migrate to other countries because they get a better facilities there second is the employment discrimination back at home actually when they see in indian organization so much discrimination so what happened they choose to just migrate to other countries because when they see actually uh, even after so much hard work their dedication and they are not been actually promoted and nothing actually is been uh, seen to them means uh, no now nobody actually respect them so what happen they usually choose to migrate to some other countries another thing the economic under development now when the young people when they see there is uh, so much backwardness right the thing actually what they need actually they, when they don't get actually right the you know because of the economy back at uh, in our country or that place actually is very very backward so they choose to migrate now example you can take example in pakistan now there are so many sector actually when the people they don't get the better opportunities because of the under development now they choose to just migrate to the other european countries another thing the lack of freedom now many people they actually especially the young people from especially the countries like uh, russia or china right now they want to just leave their country why because these countries are the communist country and they don't get the freedom actually what they need or they want another thing the poor working condition when these young people they don't get the proper condition to work there and because of that also they choose to migrate next is the lack of job opportunity now even after so much uh, skill and so much talent when the people the young people they don't get the better opportunity they choose to migrate to other countries next is the discriminating culture now in discriminating culture means actually in some countries when especially in pakistan now usually that is a muslim country now what happen they don't show respect to the uh, people actually of other religion like the hindus or the christians so these people actually because they have so much talent and they have a better skill that's why they choose to migrate to other countries next is the political intolerance now in political intolerance means actually when some countries actually they don't have the good political system now suppose if they have suppose time to time you you can find in pakistan there was a time actually large period of time actually some uh, uh, some uh, dictator actually ruled there over pakistan and uh, during the, those time actually large number of people what happened they migrated to the other countries that is the political intolerance now next we are going to see about the pull factor the pull factor we are going to see what factor actually that pull these young people the number one is the superior economic outlook in the other countries because they have a superior economic outlook actually superior economy another thing prestige of foreign training now suppose when some people when they suppose even they work for a short period of time in foreign countries and back at home in india they they usually have some prestige and because of that also they sometimes they migrate to their countries to just get some foreign training another thing stable political environment now usually the people they want to live in the in countries where the political system the whole political environment is very very stable so in some countries when the political environment is not so stable so the large number of people especially the talented people they migrate and there is the modernized educational system for the superior training now usually many developing countries they don't have the proper training systems that's why these people the young people especially they want to they usually migrate to other countries because they get the superior training there next is the intellectual freedom when the people suppose example you can find the salman rushdi or so many writers actually because they don't have the uh, intellectual intellectual freedom in their countries now salman rushdi he didn't didn't get the that freedom in pakistan so he just uh, migrate to uk 
so many examples you can find rich cultures now in the foreign countries the european culture culture actually is very very rich but in the some countries like in the middle east now there the culture is not so rich well because of that also better economic opportunities in the foreign countries usually as these people they get the better economic opportunities more job opportunities so these are some factor because of which this which is called pull factor so we have seen the push pull factor and push factor now we are going to see about the impact of brain drain so first we are going to see about the positive impact and then we are going to see about the negative impact so let's start first is the positive impact now first of all the first positive impact actually is when the people from the less developed countries now what happened when they so these people actually in the other foreign countries the developed countries they actually get the better skill they develop the better skill right and new skill they learn new skill and new expertise and when they come back to their country what happen they bring that same skill to their back to their country the home country that is the one the positive effects another one now here as the people they migrate to foreign countries what happen they send money back to their relatives and back to their families back at home in their countries next the money remittances help in reducing the level of poverty now suppose many countries will for example of the bhutan now bhutan actually is a very very poor country nepal also is a very poor country now what happen from these countries when the people they migrate to countries like india and whatever they uh, they earn here by their salary so they send the money back at home and because of that actually even the economy of their country is also it uh, also helped the same way actually you can find the same thing example of bangladesh and india and pakistan now when these people they go to the european countries and american countries the same thing they just send the that foreign currency back to their countries and this is how actually they also help actually the their home country now next we are going to see about the negative effects so the first negative effect as uh, what happened yes. let's take an example of uh, the iit now iit actually usually to get admission in iit now what happened the large number of students they sit in the examination and only the students who just score very high marks in the entrance examination they get the admission in iit now usually iit all the education actually is provided by government the sell the fees actually in iit is very very less so the most of the expenses actually is provided by the indian government so here actually the indian government is just invest investing so large sum of money there right in these people and what happen instead of working back in our country and contributing the development and the economy of our country what happen when these people when they get the opportunity in the foreign countries what happen they migrate so this is a one loss this is a brain drain and this is a one loss of these uh, genius people next is the shortage of skilled and competent people in india now usually who, which people used to migrate to the other countries the people actually who are very very highly skilled who are usually we can say they are the genius people those who are very very comp competent now these people when they migrate what happen at back at home which type of people left the people who are not so so much skilled or you can say who are not so much hard worker hard working people they are not so competent so all the the genius people because they have they went to the other countries now next is the loss of potential future entrepreneurs now because who actually usually can become an entrepreneur entrepreneur actually is a person who actually has a one dream a vision actually to establish an organization and when any person actually is a, is having a big dream to just establish a big organization so usually he provides a large number of jobs to the back at home in their country and they can contribute in the economy of their country but instead of that actually what they choose they choose to just migrate to other countries you can find so many examples you can find the example of lakshmi kumar mittal one industrialist actually in uk when very very uh, rich man 
now he established the whole thing the whole uh, or means in industry there where in united states sorry united kingdom means in england now suppose that person would be in india then he would, he would be contributing to the economy and the development of our country india next is the loss of uh, innovative ideas and invest investment in education now when these genius people actually when they migrate to some other country what happen so there is a loss of innovative ideas next is the loss of critical health and education services lack of the industrial growth etc so these are some negative effects so we have seen here the positive effect and the negative effect now for you actually very soon you will be this is the one assignment the summer assignment the chapter is the portion is over for the first semester because there is only three chapters you have to study very soon you will get the question answer right i will try to just send it and it will be there in the website for but here is the assignment it is highlighted here so the assignment is prepare a project on positive and negative impacts of brain drain in india also suggest the measures to control it in the interest of the country so this is the project means a small assignment you have to write it in three or four pages not more than that and you have to do it in the fair copy okay all the best goodbye